What's going on, Pokemon trainers? Welcome to episode 62 of Gotta Watch Em All, the podcast that brings together trainers from every corner of Pokemon fandom before watching along with an episode of Pokemon the series starting all the way back at episode 1. But today, we're going to be watching episode 62, Snow Way Out. And it's going to be a cold one. Dude, it's cold. It's freezing. Actually, it's not. It's spring. But today is Thursday, April 4th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Ken Pescatore. That other voice is Adam Tuttle. Adam, yeah, that's how are me. you? That is that is me. But we are not alone today. We are joined by the incredibly talented Bulbadork. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good. Yay. I'm excited to be chatting with you guys. Uh, we're awesome. super excited we're to excited. have you. Thank you so much for coming on. I yeah. cannot wait to uh, to get to know you and uh, and start talking about some cool content that you're doing because I think you're doing some pretty unique and really cool stuff. And uh, Aww, we're very intrigued you. by how Pokemon is a platform that allows creators to be so incredibly unique. And I think you really take advantage of that. So we'll we'll definitely get to know you in just a moment after I get through some housekeeping. This podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreon.com slash gotta watch them all where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. And that $1 will get you access to our patron-exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And I you want to give a is. huge shout-out to our show supporter tier patrons, Brittany, Jay, Jessica, Keith, Matt, M. Pitts, Terry, David, Chris, Sydney, Bacon L., The Noise, Harry, Poke, Navbot, and Purple Pancakes. And a big shout-out this week to Karka for joining at the Discord tier. Thank you guys so very much. Welcome. We really do appreciate your patronage. It means the world to us. But on today's show, we are going to get to know Bulbadork. I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm like, uh. I'm totally, I'm totally fangirling. It's like the greatest thing ever. I, I love it. Oh my God. No, I'm, I'm fangirling. <laughs> <laughs> then it works out. It's great. Uh, Pokemon Go made some major announcements today. Uh, so we'll kind of talk about all of that. Pokemon Bank subscribers have a new distribution. This is pretty cool. I think this this could be something that they start doing to kind of stretch out Pokemon Bank and maybe carry it over to Sword and Shield. So we'll talk about that. Charizard deck analysis. Adam will break down uh, one of these really cool decks that's a little bit different than what we've seen lately, where it's not focused around a GX. It's kind of uh, focused around a, uh, a, a Pokemon that you actually have to evolve so this is something we haven't seen or talked about on the show for a while because we've always talked about these big heavy hitter basic GXs. So we'll talk about that deck. We have an early look at Unbroken Bonds. Really cool article that uh, Pokemon.com put together featuring one of the illustrators from Pokemon TCG talking about the artwork and uh, how they come up with the concepts of the cards. So we'll talk about that. Pokemon Center. Detective Pikachu and Team Rocket have invaded that site like crazy. There is so much Detective Pikachu merchandise. It's absolutely crazy. I'm doing my best to stay away so I don't spend money, but that's not going to be working for me. It's, I'm, I'm failing very hard at that. Yeah, Detective Pikachu has already made me cave a little bit. So. Oh, dude, it's so bad. It's so bad. There's so much stuff. It, and it's also good. It's it's very dangerous, except for that Mewtwo plush, because that's like nightmare Ooh. fuel. We'll talk about that too. Oh, my God. I'm, I need to send you a picture in the Discord. <laughs> oh no but and then finally we'll wrap up the show with a watch along of episode 62 snow way out all right bulbador let's get to know you how are you why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself let our fans know who you are where you're from what you do and then uh we'll go from there all right well hi everybody i am bulbador i primarily post on instagram nowadays but i do have a youtube channel where i do like little openings and stuff typically when like a new set comes out i'll post a few openings and things like that and just kind of geek out over the cards because i am a collector first and foremost and I really like chasing sets. So I like to include others in that. And that's just kind of how I, I don't know, view my YouTube channel is I'm opening cards with friends, aka my subscribers. And I, I post a lot of coffee on my Instagram. And I post a lot of makeup looks, which are based off of my cards. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned coffee because <laughs> I actually have in the show notes here, Talk to us about coffee. We'll get there oh. because I, I'm like, it's so bad, but like, I'm drinking I, I'm coffee like, right now. I'm drinking coffee right now too, but I mean, I mean, I, I drink like, like 40 ounces plus a day. It's so bad. Oh. It's so bad. Relatable. I know. <laughs> I know. It, it's, it's crazy. It's, well, that's cause I'm up like 20, 
two hours a day. So I got to keep it. I got to keep got to keep it moving. Same. But where are you from? Where 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 are you in the United States? I am on the East Coast in the Hello. glorious state of North Carolina. <laughs> nice. Now we are. Oh. I am in Jersey, and Adam is in New Hampshire. So we are so East Coast, all East Coast peeps. Yeah. Nice. I'm noticing um, as I meet people in the Pokemon community, a lot of us are located on the East Coast. This is like where we all migrated to. It's great. (laughs) Uh, Meet up. Got to do a meet up. Uh, Yes. Making it happen. (laughs) You know, I had a uh, I had a a work trip scheduled to North Carolina next week that but I'm not going. Turns out I'm not going. But I typically go down to the border of Tennessee and North Carolina to the uh, Smoky Mountains. Oh, that's a beautiful area. I'm a car guy, so I do uh, the Tale of the Dragon, that crazy road. Oh, yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's like 318 turns over 11 miles cliffside. Oh, you know, it's beautiful. Drive like super, super high-powered cars, you know, death-defying white-knuckle stuff. So I'm, I'm a little <laughs> bummed I'm not going this year, but uh, oh, God, too I, bad. I, we have good podcast schedule that weekend, so it's all good. <laughs> uh, but anyway. The podcast comes first. Bro, you got to stay, got to stay the course, man. Got to stay on, on track. <laughs> You know, Bulba, why do you, Bulba, I call you Bulba. Why Most people you, do, uh, that's fine. <laughs> that's so funny, that's so great. Uh, what's your history with Pokemon? Now, you said you're a TCG collector. Oh, man. Where does the, the franchise kind of fit into your life? When did you start getting into it? Oh, God, when it when it came out in the United States, honestly. I was your average 90s kid. I was nice. up early every morning to watch, you know, the animated series and... I had my little binders full of cards and I traded with my friends and we would, you know, quote unquote, play the game. But really, we we didn't. Yeah, no one knew how to play back then. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) And, um, you know, I was always glued to my Game Boy playing the games and everything like that. And it's just kind of something that I've grown up with and never really let go of. It's, It's something that has stayed with me literally for so long (laughs) (laughs) that's great that's great and now i have to ask because i was thinking it too go ahead adam go ahead was it was it red version or blue version it was red version (laughs) it was definitely red (laughs) that's right adam take it red (laughs) yes no see adam adam was like a hardcore blue you know even on our pokemon go show like we ask absolutely everybody if they have a long-term history with pokemon and Whenever they say Pokemon Blue, Adam gets all excited, and then whenever I say when they say Pokemon Red, I get all excited. So it's uh, it's pretty interesting. It's nice it's to funny. see the diversity and like who's a content creator that's you know chosen Blue versus who's chosen Red. Well, I mean, if it makes you feel better, I also had Blue version, so <laughs> yes. it makes you feel a little bit better. <laughs> it's so funny because that is always like the next statement from the the creators that we have on. They always say, "Hey, but wait." I also played the other color. I also played yellow. <laughs> it's all good. You know, equal opportunity. But uh, yeah, Adam was always like, but which one did you buy first? Oh, I bought them both at the same time. Which one did you open first? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Oh, my gosh. So you mentioned that you primarily post on Instagram. That's kind of how I found you, where I found you. Yeah. Why don't you talk about the type of content that you post on there? Because I think it's exceptionally unique. Now, the TCG is something that both Adam and I hold very, very close to our hearts. Adam is a competitive player. Uh, I'm an old dude. I'm I'm an old fart. I'm 41 years old. Uh, you know, when when Pokemon came out in the states, you know, I was out of high school, living that life. But I was part of the original uh, Pokemon Professor program that. Uh, Pokemon Company International put together back in the day. Oh, wow. I got vetted through like Wizards of the Coast. I did tournaments and all that good stuff. So the TCG is like my bloodline of Pokemon. That's how I really got started. So any kind of connection to cards or TCG at large, Adam and I are both all over because that's kind of in our blood. Yeah. So when I found your content, it was this really cool smash up of tcg content but then also some other really unique ways to kind of utilize pokemon to to make content so why don't you why don't you elaborate on the type of content that you do on instagram because i think it's super oh, unique thank you i'm glad that you think it's unique all right i guess it was like new year's of 2018 i set a new year's resolution to kind of like break out of my comfort shell and one of the ways i chose to do that was through my makeup and I decided to incorporate one of my like really big passions, which is Pokemon and my, you know, Pokemon cards and everything like that in my collection. And 
I started to just challenge myself to every day grab a random card. Like I would just flip to a random page and pull one out and I would base my makeup off of that for the day or at least like my eyeshadow. And I had no idea what I was doing when I first started. No (laughs) idea at all. (laughs) And I think in the last year, I don't even know how many posts I've done. But for a while, I really tried to do at least one Pokemon card inspired makeup a day on my Instagram. And I've grown a lot in, I guess, my knowledge as far as makeup goes and my skill level, sort of. I'm still learning. But yeah, I, I base my makeup for the day off of a random Pokemon card. And it's really fun and it's really helped. Yeah, it's, it's so fantastic. cool that it's random. That's so <laughs> cool because it's like, you know, it it seems exceptionally curated. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't seem random. Like it seems very, very curated. Yeah, and here I am. I'm like, I've played with these cards in tournaments. So like I have a connection to those cards yeah. as a player. So that's how I was drawn in. <laughs> and then also the one time you posted a picture of your brass knuckle cup and <laughs> I was like where'd you get that and then you responded <laughs> and then I proceeded to buy one <laughs> uh, well like I've had that cup for so long and it used to like say something on it but now it doesn't which is perfect because I just sit one of my cards beside it as I'm drinking my coffee <laughs> it's perfect there you go back back to the coffee I love oh, coffee me too oh, coffee. now I want one Oh no. <laughs> oh, and you don't have a coffee? What? I don't. It's late. Well, dude, it's 11 o'clock at night. No one should really be drinking coffee right now, but it's like, you know, here then we are. How do you explain <laughs> me drinking it right now? It's, well, because yeah. we are, uh, I guess we, I, yeah, you know, the, the, the content creator scene is very caffeine focused because. I can't sleep. <laughs> Must, That's good. It's good must for edit photos <laughs> for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's funny because um, we collaborate with a lot of other podcasts, and on the Pokemon Go side, we have the show Lured Up, and GoCast is a fantastic podcast that covers Go as well. And the host of GoCast posts something the other day on Discord or somewhere, and he goes, "Oh man, I you know I have insomnia, I can't sleep." And I'm like, "That's it, dude. Welcome. You're you're an official content creator now. You know the no, the no sleep club. It's all good. You're in." Oh man. And he's like, "Yeah, I guess I guess you're right." But oh yeah, that's gosh. pretty funny. Content creators live <laughs> on coffee forever, always. Yes. Well, you know, you know, and I used to be like a Red Bull person and I've stayed away for years and like I find myself drinking Red Bull again. I'm like, dude, this is bad. I got to stop. Uh, you're so heading bad. down that road. <laughs> I know. I, I don't know. think it's I, like, no, I don't think I ever went down that road. It was like I'd have one here or there because like somebody offered me one or somebody else was getting one. So I just got one with that. Like I've never been huge on energy drinks. Well, you're better off I because the they energy are of absolutely plants. terrible. It's drinking oven cleaner. It's so bad. Yeah. They're so Stay bad away for you. from them, as I usually. Yes. Have All right, one. let's get <laughs> let's get back to your makeup here yeah. because you know you say you've learned and you say you've grown and you know your skill level has increased now. When yeah, I look so at what your level makeups, are you? Yeah, level forty. No, it's you, it's it's some Hollywood level quality stuff that you're doing here you know so it's amazing so do you have you had any formal training at all or is this something that you've kind of just started as a hobby I have zero training um again I started it like a year ago so um you know practicing literally every day and learning just from practice like I try to watch like a little bit of tutorials and stuff because there's so many on the internet there's so many amazing sure amazing creators out there that have so many tutorials and they've helped a lot but aside from that no <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool though that, that I think that's that that speaks volumes to your determination to to get good at something because it's you would think that you have some significant training because the stuff is spot on and I mean the way you match the palettes too I think that's one of you know more so the the quality of the makeup at large but the (laughs) the way that you can really take the palette from the card and then transfer that to the makeup space is fantastic because it matches so incredibly well and you know it makes for a great result super cool glad yeah the galade picture is like phenomenal oh thank you that was like one (laughs) card that i tried to try and try and try to like make competitive but it like never really was like top tier poor glade (laughs) 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 
I should definitely post a picture of my hand, like the back of my hand, after one of my makeup looks or whatever. Uh, it is covered in swatches where I have like tested the color on my skin from like one of my eyeshadow palettes just to like compare exactly to the card. <laughs> oh, cool. My wife, Melissa, who uh, he's, she co-hosts on the Go, um, our Pokemon Go show, Lured Up, and she's, you know, we, we're... Like I said, we're old folks here, but we're we're high school sweethearts, so we've been together Aww. for you know forever. So we grew up through Pokemon. We grew up with Pokemon, and when I showed her your content, she's totally all about the makeup thing. So she's got like all these funky palettes of you know that look like cartoons, like these weird clamshells and all. You know, just <laughs> me me coming. I'm like I'm like a, a Viking nerd, so I'm like the furthest thing from makeup to you know you could imagine, but. <laughs> It's, you know, she's got all this crazy stuff. So, I mean, some of them even smell good. It's like, this is makeup. Why does it smell oh, like chocolate? It's yes, so weird. those but are so I just nice. want to eat it. <laughs> but, is it edible? You know, no. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But no, but she, unicorn tears. I, I just hear the words unicorn tears that she loves that color. It, it's cool because I think that it really, uh, it, it can connect with a, a community outside of Pokemon. And then because you have the Pokemon element, you're, you're really exposing new people to Pokemon. I think that's one of the coolest things because anytime that Pokemon can be used for a platform to kind of cross over into different communities, it's a fantastic tool for that. So I think that's really, really cool and neat with what you're doing because I started going down like this rabbit hole of people that were commenting on your post and everything. And I'm like, these aren't Pokemon people. These are like people from other communities. Like this is, this is really cool. They like, really this are. Is so, they really are. Yeah, and it's I get so messages diverse. from people from time to time or comments from people. And they're like, you know, I haven't even thought about Pokemon for 10 plus years or 15 years. And seeing your post from like, you know, cause I tag all the makeup tags and stuff like that. Um, they're like, you know, I think I want to get back into Pokemon, and I'm always oh, so yes, excited. That's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's the greatest. I love it. It makes me so happy whenever I get those comments or messages. So you mentioned that Instagram is typically your, your main platform right now, but you do have, uh, you know, you, you do some content on Twitch, you do some YouTube stuff. So yes. what, what are your overall goals for your brand? Like, are you looking to kind of stick to the Instagram space, or are you going to do some like video content as well? I really, really enjoyed uh, making videos, and I still do. <laughs> um, when I have time, I think that time is my biggest issue. Is you know, editing and posting and keeping up with all of that is something that I run into. Whereas Instagram is, it's relatively easy because it's at my fingertips and it's it's just an easier platform. But I yeah, do you can want just get to get in and get out. Yeah, Fairly I easy. do definitely want to continue uploading videos. Just it's something I do for fun, honestly, in my spare time. And I started it whenever I moved to a new state and I didn't know anybody here. And it was just kind of my way of, again, hanging out with people, <laughs> even though I'm not literally, but figuratively. like. Sure. No, and I think that that you know, going into it with, you say like, Hey, I'm having fun. You know, I'm hanging out. I'm having fun. That kind of organic property to content creation, I think is very evident in some creators results because you can tell that this is super organic. It's real and it's, it's, it's honest. And I think that comes across super well because, you know, that perfect blend of, you know, the positivity of Pokemon and super art, you know, hyper artistic stuff. It's just a, it's just a really nice blend. And I think that because it's natural for you and you're, you, like you said, you're doing it for fun that, uh, mm -hmm. that really, that really comes across. So that's super cool. Oh, I'm glad that it does. <laughs> I'm really glad. <laughs> yeah. You can tell that you really, really love Pokemon. Oh yeah. I'm about that Pokemon life. <laughs> All right. Well, who's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> Bulbasaur, or really, it's yeah. the entire Bulbasaur evolution line. Like, did you really you know, have like, to do ask? Do I really have to ask? I know exactly. It's like such Jeez, a formality. I need to change my name to Deli Adam or something. So do Adam it. is obsessed with Deli Bird to the point that no one can talk about any singular Pokemon with at least without him at least bringing up the Deli Bird name. Like he just can't handle yeah, it. Yeah, I can't go a show without it. Wow, I mean, you just did it. <laughs> exactly. It won't be the last. It won't be the well, last. Well, no, honestly, because we're talking about Snow Way Out. They're trapped in a cave, and it's like I know Delibird's not in the series yet, but like, where's Delibird? 
I want to have like one of those little bells, like the bell hop bell or like, you know, order up kind of bell. So like every time Adam says deli bird, it's like, ding, I'll just like keep a count because it's, it's, not, it's <laughs> well, nonstop, it. Adam. So do I get it? You're bell so I can go ding. <laughs> See, I'm a geodude guy, but I don't talk about geodude, geodude. all the time. A geodude needs more You're, appreciation. Yeah, he's not, well, so Ken just doesn't go hard enough. That's why, that's why he's not. Dude, I go Judy. maximum hardness. That's how hard I go. He's just like, <laughs> don't Gia, go dude, and then crosses his hands. That's like, that's all he does. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that if you flip Geodude upside down, he looks like an old man? Stop it. No. <laughs> I had I had the, the Tommy figure from forever ago, and I just kept it upside down because it looked like an old man to me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I did that with the with my, my AR po- photo I took the other day. I was like, I flipped it over, and it looks like an old man. See, I can't do that because then, like, it's one of those things. Like, once it's seen, it can't be unseen, and I don't want to. I don't want to taint my poor Geo dude. I All right, to. don't <laughs> tag Ken in an upside down Geo dude. Stop. Picture. Well, now Stop. I feel tempted to. Poor Geo dude. That's well, the you point. know what it is. It's because the, the big, the big like hard brow ridge. It becomes like the big old man bottom lip. So, I, I mean, I know, I know, but you yeah. know, leave, leave Geo dude alone. So oh my gosh. All right, I, I do have this last line here. Yeah. Talk to us about coffee. All right. So, because I was, so I'm, I'm trolling oh, your pages. Yeah. I'm looking at all stuff. And I'm like, why is there so much coffee here? I go, there's like <laughs> all these different coffee drinks. So, how, how did this, how did this come about? Like, I guess, you know, do you, do you like, do you, do you put sugar in your coffee? I do not put sugar, but I do use creamer. So, that's kind of okay. the same thing. You use like a sweetened creamer? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. That's not bad. Cause like when I, cause sometimes I'll talk to people about coffee and they're like, yeah, black, like my soul. And that's it. And yeah, they won't, they won't put me. anything I'm in black. it. Yeah. See, and then when I hear that, I'm like, you are a psychopath. And that's yeah. why. <laughs> I mean, Cold brew black. I'd rather not oh, drink man. like motor oil. And that is what black coffee tastes like. So no, it <laughs> no doesn't. Thing. It's fantastic. Nope. <laughs> you can't. I remember, it's I remember where were my I don't know where we were. See, we're here at the, and I'm in the Jersey Shore. There's lots of like, you know, it's kind of becoming like a Seattle-esque upstart of coffee companies and coffee brands, which are great because there's really diverse and fantastic tasting coffee all over the place from these, you know, expanding mom and pop franchises. It's really cool. But we Adam visited to Jersey. Remember, we went to that place, Rook. Rook shout out oh to Rook God. Coffee in Jersey. Melissa posted and it's a like, photo, and I was like, why am I not there? I, I can't <laughs> even drink it because it's so strong. Like, I like lighter style coffee. And Adam he got black light, coffee, light and he's just like, yo, it's the best thing ever. I'm like, dude, how do you – like, I it, like my whole body would just pucker up because it was so – it's so bitter. that I was just like, I can't. Nope. Oh. No, can't do it. You got to try to do put, cold brew because then it's the same thing, just – it has that. I tried, taken dude. Away. I tried. I tried going like with that, and I mean, it was so powerful. Like enough. I'm halfway through, and I'm like, oh my god, I got a headache from this caffeine. Like, You're like a Gia strong. Dud. Gia Dud. <laughs> Gia Dud. You got to be a Gia <laughs> Dude. Come on. Can't, can't stop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, yeah. Bubble Dork. Poor what Gio is Gio. your favorite makeup that you've done for what Pokemon? What have you? What is your favorite like outcome? Oh gosh. That's that's actually a really hard question because I think that with every single new one that I do, it just kind of becomes my favorite because I feel like it looks better than the last one. And Heck yeah, that's great. That's a great mantra. That's a great like path to follow. That's awesome. Yeah, I, honestly, I think that's my answer <laughs> because it really <laughs> does. Um, each new one becomes my favorite. Okay, you understandable. Yeah. You know which one I really liked? I liked the Plusle and Minin because you <laughs> kind of had that the half and half. I thought that was like super creative. Yeah, I also like the Neuvern one. That's got just it's just the colors. I did. I did like the Neuvern one. I did like that one. But that's a beautiful card. <laughs> I encourage everyone to please check out Bulbadork's work. I will link all of her channels and all of her destinations in the show notes. Please be sure to check her out. Ken's uh, encouraging. Thank- I'm just like, go there. You have to go there. <laughs> I'm like, please go there. Gently pr- press the subscribe button. Gently press the follow button. No, it, it's all good. But I will link Bulbadork's stuff in the show notes. Please check her out. Bulb, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really we're so excited yeah, to have you, you on. Oh, my gosh. And 
you know, we really uh, we really do appreciate diversity of cre- of content creation in Pokemon, and that's something that we're going to start, you know, really focusing on featuring on the show is trying to bring in creators from outside of the box perspectives or something that's unique. I think you really hit the nail on the head because there's I, I don't know. Uh, of any other creators that are kind of doing uh, what you're doing, the way you're doing it. I think it's fantastic that, that you know, you're kind of standing out like that and uh, it's well-deserved. So I definitely will link to all of Bulbadark's stuff in the description. Make sure that you uh, everyone checks her out. But where where can our community find you? Where would you like them to, to, to connect with you? Probably my Instagram because that is where I am predominantly active, pretty active, I would say. I post daily and I do try to get to messages from time to time. I try to catch up. Probably there, Instagram.com slash Bulbadork. Fantastic. Well, thank you again so much for coming on. We really do appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely, uh, you know, connect in the future because I, I think that, you know, bringing creators together uh, in, in this kind of way, breaking, you know, crossing media streams per se is, is definitely <laughs> a good thing. And yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks again so much for coming on. And uh, we'll be back right after this, guys. But definitely check out Bulbadork and everything that she's doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Wow, I can't believe it, a Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur, it bears the seed of a plant on its back from birth. The seed slowly develops. Researchers are unsure whether to classify Bulbasaur as a plant or animal. All right, we're back from our break. Thanks so much for that. Thank you to Bulbadork once again for coming on the show. She was super cool. Yeah, she was absolutely fantastic. A pleasure to We're fangirling so hard, bro. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) No, she was super cool, man. It's just sometimes there's there's creators that, you know, you become raving fans, and it's just like, I just want everyone to know about her because I think what she's doing is super cool and super cool for the community. Yes. Let's talk about this news. There's so much news going on in the world of Pokemon this week. Wait, wait, wait. There's Pokemon Go. Oh my god, dude. So th- this was this was big news. So last week they made the announcement that they were going to make an announcement, and that was today. And they came through and in, in with with a blaze of information and what they did was they announced dates and some information for all of the events that are going to be happening, the real life events that are happening throughout the summer. So this is what we got. In the past, 2017, 2018, GoFest was a United States exclusive event. We had them in Chicago. This year, they announced three Pokemon Go Fests. I was blown away. The first one being June 13th or 16th in Chicago. So this is the what we're used to. Adam and I will be there along with Melissa. So we would definitely, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if, if you're going, tag us, let us know. We'll definitely like to say hi. July 4th through 7th, Dortmund, Germany. This was the, the location of the giant Safari Zone last year. They're doing a Pokemon Go Fest July 4th through 7th. And then this was an interesting one. They didn't announce a date because I guess it wasn't in stone yet. But the Asia will have their own Go Fest as well coming in the summer of 2019. So that date is yet to come. So three Go Fests. Really awesome. Wow. That's 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 crazy. I mean, it cuts down on people so of that, that fear of missing out. Yep. So we'll have, you know... I, I want to say less people, but who knows? There could be, just because it's the first one, there could be tons of people that show up. I, I think that all of these events are going to be massive just because, you know, even though we're going into it's the third first. year of Pokemon Go, it's still growing exponentially. It's bizarre where the player base might be shrinking overall, but the level of hardcore players is increasing. And they just announced something that it, the revenue was up like 40%. $2.3 million a day in Q1 Pokemon Go is generated. So wow. it is just, it's insane. And uh, it's great because people are, you know, are reacting with their wallets. And I think that's an incredible way to give a game length and legs to, to kind of last. So I definitely have paid plenty into that $2.3 million, So it's it's all good. But three Go Fest, super excited for that. And the big deal about this, though, is... They are going to be selling tickets through an in-game sales method. Now, they didn't come out and say this overtly in the announcement, but in the press releases that went out to media, it stated in there that the tickets will be sold in-app. So this could potentially quell the entire issue of scalping, which was rampant last year, where people were selling $20 GoFest tickets 
for a thousand dollars on scalping sites or on eBay or wherever. Or eBay, yeah. Totally crazy. <laughs> that was awful. It was it was terrible. And you know, there was kind of this false flag that Niantic had put out saying, you know, you're gonna have to register with your your gamer in game trainer name and you know this won't you know this will prevent scalpers, but it, it turned out that you did not have to do that and uh all those those rotten scalpers took advantage of it and you know it was like the tickets went on sale and five minutes later you go on eBay and it's just like hundreds and hundreds of listings for like tons of tickets, super expensive, and they were selling. Like that was the scary part. People were paying. So hopefully this will will kind of combat that and uh we'll see some, you know, a, a major reduction in in the way that you know people can kind of exploit that. They also announced four of the next community days. Which is fantastic. May 19th, June 8th, July 21st, August 3rd. So we have dates for the next four events. Now, for me, I'm super excited because two of these dates are on Sundays. So I can actually play a full community day again, which I haven't been able to do for months because all the community days in recent months have been Saturday events. So I'm really excited that they're that is fantastic. Yeah. I'm happy they give us these these dates and way in advance because this is like can plan and have these community days happen. exactly exactly now my guess is that may is going to be either torchic or mudkip you know june maybe ralts july is going to be the other either torchic or mudkip and then maybe in august we see slack off i think those are kind of still in that 10k egg pool that they go back and forth with the starters but I'm super excited that I get to play. I, I just can't wait. And then they finally put a little teaser at the bottom of the of the press release saying multiple Safari Zone events will still be announced for the second half of 2019. Now, we always thought that GoFest was going to be the U.S. exclusive event. Now that this has gone international, I wonder if Safari Zones will come to the States. And if that's the case, that would be super cool because then maybe they do one in New York or in San Francisco or Florida or, you know... Akron, Ohio for Pidgey Grab it. You know, like who who knows? It's like it, it could be all these little isolated events coming to the States. I'm really excited. So uh, if you want full details on Pokemon Go, check out our other podcast, Lured Up. Just visit luredup.com. You can listen to all the shows there. Make sure you subscribe to that as well. We would greatly appreciate it. But we dig into significant detail about Pokemon Go on that show. Pokemon Bank. This is something that uh, has kind of not been in the zeitgeist of 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 topics that people have talked about recently because it's not connected to Pokemon Let's Go. It connects to the 3DS games. Now, what this will allow you to do, you pay five bucks a year and you can transfer Pokemon from your 3DS to the Pokemon Bank and then ultimately pull those down, uh, you know, through a couple different methods, depending on what game you're bringing or importing into. Uh, you can take your Pokemon from one game and transfer it to the next, even if it's cross-platform. So, even like the virtual console stuff that they did with Pokemon Red and Blue, you can connect it to Bank and then ultimately pull those Pokemon down and import them into other games. So if you paid this five bucks, or if you sign up, I think before October, you could take advantage of this. And uh, let, me, let me just read it directly from uh, the Pokemon.com article. It says, Pokemon Bank is a paid service for the Nintendo 3DS family of systems that allows you to store and transfer your Pokemon online. For a limited time, if you sign up or are already registered for Pokemon Bank, you'll receive a Pissimian and a Rangaroo for your Pokemon Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Sun, or Moon game. Uh, the two Pokemon will each arrive with a hidden ability that they can't acquire through normal gameplay. So we've seen distributions before at retailers, whether it's you know GameStop or Best Buy or even Target. But I think this might be one of the first times, at least in recent history, that they've done a distribution for Pokemon Bank users. And I think this is great because it kind of gives people a reason to fire up the 3DS. It gives people a reason to revisit Bank and potentially get back into games because now they have new Pokemon to kind of shift around and move around. So I really think this is a great idea and I would love to see them continue this. And I'm sure... For the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, yeah. that one Sword and Shield comes out that bank will also connect to that. So that, that'll that be the, the real game changer. I mean, you could pull games from Gen 1, you could pull Pokemon from Gen 1 and you know drop them into Gen 8, which is really neat and really, really cool. If you want details on the different hidden abilities that these Pokemon have, I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out, but they seem like some pretty cool and unique uh, hidden abilities that will you know actually make it worth it to, to you know pull these Pokemon down in the distribution. 
All right, let's jump over to the TCG side of things. We've been talking about some pretty TCG. heavy hitting decks recently. We talked about the Venusaur deck last week. Before that, we talked about oh, the Zapdos decks. Now, let's talk about Charizard. Dude, Charizard's my son's favorite Pokemon. I'm sure it's a fan favorite across the board. Tons of people love Charizard. But what makes this deck unique is one, the amount of Pokemon that are in the deck. 17 Pokemon cards are are in this list and you're going to have multiple Pokemon that need to be evolved. And what we've seen in the previous decks that we've covered is that they're using these big time GX or tag team cards, which are basics. So you didn't have to worry about the strategy of finding basic Pokemon and then evolving up. This is a deck where that kind of flips over where you really have to focus on finding the Pokemon, getting the energy and then evolving up. So Adam, what can you tell us about this deck? Anything that stands out to you? Okay, so the deck, it's pretty standard. You have, you know, four Charmanders, because that's how you get into Charizard, but you only have one Charmeleon. What that means is you're going to play four rare candies. Right. An item card that lets you kind of just skip from Charmander straight to Charizard. And you have also have um, Alolan Vulpix and Alolan Ninetales, the fairy, the fairy one, with the ability. So Alolan Vulpix has the beacon attack that allows you to search your deck for up to two Pokemon. So you can search your deck for, you know, the Alolan nine tails and a Charizard. You got Charmander on the bench. Next turn, you evolve Vulpix into nine tails, search your deck for two item cards, rare candy, play rare candy, evolve straight into Charizard. And then that's where things get heated. <laughs> Cause Charizard. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to know. So Charizard has, an ability it's called roaring resolve so you don't even need to attach for the turn you just use his ability it says once during your turn before you attack you may put two damage counters on this pokemon if you do search your deck for two fire energy cards and attach them to this pokemon then shuffle your deck so he takes two damage counters and places two energy on himself putting him at 130 hit points and then for two fire he has continuous blaze ball does 30 damage plus 50 more damage for each fire energy card that you discard from him so i mean the attack says you have to discard all of them so those two discarding plus the 30 is going to be 130 damage <laughs> so sick and this deck runs two choice bands too so i mean it's like this is it's pretty cool how you can use like a, a pretty complex sequence of events to get charizard out and then once you get charizard out get these energies on there, scrap the energies, and then just recycle. You have to go back to this recycle strategy where you're not only recycling the Pokemon, but recycling the energies back in too. So I think this makes for... See, I thought it was a joke. When it's was crazy. Playing. I was like, what is this card? And because I've play, only played like two games versus it on uh, PTCGO, and I got crushed. I was like, uh, what? <laughs> and so I play Malamar. And so I've, I'm, you know, I've got Distortion Door Giratina, so it brings it back from the discard, and then Malamar just attaches energies to it, and then I bring it active. And so I'm it, the only way that like I can defeat this card is because it damages itself, and then it becomes like a, if I drop an EX, they have the advantage. If they drop an EX, I have the advantage. But it comes down to whoever takes the first prize, um, and that can because they can consistently get energies, and I can consistently get energies. So it's it's a tough deck and it's something that you can't just overlook because if they do use the um the roaring resolve and then they attach a third energy, they're hitting for 180 damage. <laughs> That's sick. That pretty That's much one shots a lot of GXs. And then with the choice band, that puts it up to two ten, so it can take down things like uh Zorark, which is huge. So like it's competitive. Very competitive. I thought it was interesting that Jirachi also makes an appearance in this deck too. That seems to be a pretty pretty standard and prominent card in the meta right now. It's it's you know it, yeah. We'll see. Jirachi is going to help you search for those rare candies because you do run the Guzmas um, and you run a skateboard. Um, so and you run switch cards, so you can get them out of the active fairly easily. Well, Stellar Wish is great, man. I, I think that it's one of the most practical cards in in the meta right now, and. Running it with the escape board makes it just that much easier to get in and out, utilize it, kind of exploit its ability, and just pull it away. Um, so that way it doesn't get taken out because it's low hit points. But it, it's it just seems like a, a pretty unique deck, and I really like the dynamic here because when you know there's a pretty heavy duty juxtaposition between 
the Zapdos deck we covered a couple of weeks ago, the Venusaur deck we covered last episode, and now this one. Totally three different, completely different play styles and completely different list styles uh, just makes for a, a pretty significantly diverse way to play. So totally into it. But wh- what do you think of the deck overall? I think it's fire. Oh, jeez. Set myself <laughs> up for that one. <laughs> uh, no, but it, it runs the Ditto Prism Star, which fits in perfectly because it can be um, a little nine tails or it can be the Flareon GX that's in here. It can be a Charmeleon. It, it, it just gives you more options. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know if I really care for the EV and the Flareon. I think I'd up my uh, Alola Ninetales and Voltex. Well, that's one of the, the cool things to, I like. Just to keep consistency. When, when Pokemon.com puts together these lists and they give you the, the recipe for these decks, it you can kind of look at look at it like a global view and see all the cards, you know, kind of laid out in the list and say, yeah, I don't really like this one. Let me switch it up. And, you know, it makes it really easy to kind of tweak and, and customize. So, you know, I, I don't really I don't really have too much experience with uh, this style deck, but um, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right, Unbroken Bonds. We talked about this last episode. Uh, the next set coming to the TCG. I think it's May 3rd, right? Or something like that. Uh, but coming from Pokemon.com, they put together a really neat article here. And I kind of love when they do this and they pull the curtain back a little bit. But um, what they did here was they interviewed two people from the TCG creation team. Um, let's see if I could do this. Atasushi Nagashima, who's the game director of the TCG. And Mitsuhiro Arita, who is a illustrator on the TCG, who, who specialized in the tag team uh, Pokemon GX cards. So they feature a bunch of cards here, and they talk to the creators about the either the process going into creating these cards or, or the art style. And I thought it was really cool because it, it pulls the curtain back and kind of gives you some insight into the art. Now, when we, you know, even when Bulbadork was talking. You know, she's a collector. You know, I love collecting these cards as, you know, more than I like playing the card game. And when you get a little bit more insight, it kind of gives you a little bit closer of a connection to the card itself, to the artwork, to the artist. And, you know, I think that's a really cool dynamic because each one of these cards, the artwork is so phenomenal. It's like a little, you know, it's a, it's a mini piece of artwork. It's it's really, really neat. So there's a couple cards here I want to talk about. And what we'll do here is I'll kind of explain what they talk about in the interview. And then, Adam, maybe you can give a little bit of flavor of how you could actually utilize these cards. But the first one they show here is Ferramosa and Buzzwall GX tag team. I love this because you have the dual Ultra Beast set up here. And the art style, you have Ferramosa, you know, throwing a big kick, and you have Buzzwall GX throwing a big punch. And it's just a, a really cool balance between the two. In the interview, they say, how do you capture the distinct traits of these two Pokemon into a single card? Uh, and Mr. Arita responds, uh, while there are exceptions, what I typically try to do when approaching a tag team Pokemon GX illustration is to imagine that the featured Pokemon are battling against foes. In this illustration, I had Ferramosa unleash a kick in unison with Buzzwell's punch to really emphasize the sense of speed and power of their attacks. So I really like this because it when you hear how this was created and then you look at the card, it's like, oh my goodness, they he absolutely captured that. Like it looks like it looks it's just the the artwork is so aggressive, you could tell that both of these Pokemon are like in mid attack. It looks really neat. But what do you think of this card? Do you think that there could be practical use out of this? Yes. It is probably my favorite, and just because of its GX attack, but it has Jet Punch, which if anybody's familiar with Buzzole GX, he has Jet Punch, but he's a fighting Pokemon, and it does 30, and then 30 damage to one of their your opponent's bench Pokemon. This has the exact same attack, only it's a grass type. So now you've got a grass and a fighting Pokemon in format that if you're running anything like Squirtles, they're going to one-shot you because your weakness to grass. If you're playing Zorark and you've got Zorus, a regular Buzzoli GX would knock that out with one hit. But we're talking about the tag team GX. So this is where Formosa comes in. She's elegant, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so Elegant Soul is a, you know, two grass, one colorless energy attack. It does 190. That's legit. <laughs> pretty much knocks out a GX. End of story. And then it says during your next turn, this this elegant whatever soul attack does base damage is like sixty, which is not a big deal because Guzma's in. That's what I was gonna say. You you can Guzma in like if you have a choice band or like bring a Jirachi in. Yeah, 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 yeah. But here's where it gets 
insanity. Grass Energy, Beast Game, GX. Does 50 damage, so literally not that great. If your opponent's Pokemon would be knocked out by this attack, take one more prize card. It's insane. So if you knock out a basic Pokemon, you take two. Cool, 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 cool. But it says if he has seven additional extra energies attached to it and the Pokemon gets knocked out, you take three additional prize cards. What that means (laughs) for anybody that's, you know, that is thinking about it, if they have a tag team GX, you knock it out with this attack with seven extra energy. So eight energies, you're going to win the game in one knockout. That's insane. That's so cool. That's like, it's, it's like broken. <laughs> it almost. And so- you might be asking, how do I get there? There's a Venusaur in the Shining Legends that has an overgrowth ability. Yep. I believe that's what it's called. But it allows you to, all of your grass energies in play count as two. So if you have four energies attached to this, counts as eight. There you go. Counts as the seven extra. Oh, man counts to win the game that's an exciting card how crazy is that and we've been talking about how these tag team cards really bring this element of high action and you know big plays where the venusaur deck we were talking about last week was kind of this slow burn where you know you can let your prizes dwindle down but then recycle all your trainers back into your hand and kind of have this this slow burn this is insane how you can you could turn the tide of the game with one attack i love it absolutely awesome all right, another one here. We'll talk about one more. Uh, there's a bunch of bunch of different cards they feature here, but we'll talk about one more just because this is probably my favorite artwork of all of them. It's Reshiram and Charizard GX. Absolutely amazing, amazing artwork. And they ask uh, Mr. Arita the same question. How did you capture the distinct traits of these two Pokemon into a single card? This was his response, and I think this is great. And when you see the card, it makes complete sense. He says... Quote, by placing the two Pokemon in a collage style, I was able to create a very cool composition while also fulfilling the request I was given to make them feel like they are in the same space together. It's always a challenge with Tag Team Pokemon GX cards because the Pokemon must be drawn to scale in relation to each other, and there's a surprising big difference in the size of Reshiram and Charizard. End quote. So when you look at this card, it looks so amazing because you can really tell that they're teammates. They look like they're they're just attacking in unison, attacking against the same opponent. I don't know, man. I am absolutely, absolutely in love with this artwork. Probably one of the coolest cards I've seen in a real long time. What do you think of this one? I don't think it's that great of an artwork. What? I don't. I don't, honestly. Oh, my goodness. I love this maybe, card. Maybe it's because I've seen the Outrage attack like uh, one way too many times. <laughs> Reshiram, sin- Reshiram and Zekrom both have had the same Outrage attack since black and white the first set basically it does an amount of damage here it does 30 and then 10 more damage for each damage counter on it so the more you damage you do to rush ram charizard they're going to add that add 30 to that and do it back to you so it could come back to bite you in the butt but then you've got flare strike it does 230 damage which again for four energies it's going to knock out any gx pretty much Pretty much, yep. And then it says this Pokemon can't use fire. Like, again, oh, you can't use it next turn? Pfft, Guzma. <laughs> it's double blaze at TX attack. does 200 damage. But if you have, and that's for three fires. If you have three additional fires, it does 100 damage more. I don't know if that, like, is necessary. Is there... 230. What, what, what was the, the biggest hit point card? Wasn't it the Wailord card? Wailord and Magic Card yeah. GX. Yeah, so I mean, and that was, th- is it 320? I forget what it, I forget what it is, but I bet you if you smack, if you, if you slap a choice band onto this, you could probably take that card out with that one hit. Yes. That's, that's pretty wild. And it's interesting too, the, the way that we kind of, the way we feel about this. I love the artwork. You don't really love the artwork. You're into the movesets, sort of. It might be overkill. For me, it's like, wow, 300 damage. That's awesome. Well, that's what Charizard's known for, to be doing the most damage. <laughs> Literally is what he's known for. And literally what Reshiram in the card game is known for is the outrage attack. It, that's why this is funny to me. I don't think it's it's going to be like crazy playable, but Fire is getting so much support. Well, let, let, let's so, listen to what Mr. We'll Nagashima had to say. They asked him, why All did right. you choose to match up these two Pokemon as a tag team partner? And he says, 
Quote, we chose these two Pokemon as a continuation of a more straightforward classic concept expressed by the Pikachu and Zekrom GX pair. The background story to this card is that Charizard was completely surrounded by enemies, fighting against them all alone. Against insurmountable odds, Charizard fought bravely, and the legendary Pokemon Reshiram, recognizing Charizard's strength, swoops in to the rescue. And that's the scene that we came up oh, with for the card. That's I know, right? So it's like you, you see like Charizard battling, outnumbered, completely going through all this. And then Reshiram sees this, sees the courage of Charizard, swoops in, saves the day. I love it. I love this lore. I think it's super cool. And I just love hearing the stories behind these cards because it makes me appreciate the art style just that much more. But there's a bunch of cards that they talk about on this page. Uh, Muck and Alolan Muck, another really unique one that they take two forms and make them and make them a tag team. There's a Marshadow and Machamp card. That one has really cool art as well. A Greninja Zoroark, Lucario Melmetal, a Gardevoir and Sylveon, another fantastic art. But if you want to see this, link in the description if you want to check up and read on all these cards. I love stuff like this. I hope Pokemon.com continues to pull the curtain back a little bit because I love this insight. It makes me just engage with the cards so much more. One more thing before we get into our episode, PokemonCenter.com, they did it again. Oh my God. I know. This was a big week for Pokemon Center. Now, over the past couple of weeks, they, they've been releasing like one series of products, you know, per week. But now that Detective Pikachu is starting to ramp up, they have a ton, a metric ton of product. Like crazy. A whole bunch of different t shirts, polo shirts, all really cool stuff that the characters in the movie actually wear. Patch set, pins. I love the hats. The the you know, look. I love the coffee. All right, rings. you know what? Oh, We're, I think we might have to buy one of these and send it to Bulbador because this is like <laughs> right up her alley. With Detective Pikachu being addicted to coffee and caffeine, I think this is really fitting for this episode. We've talked about coffee so much, but I just love all this branding. I want the police badge. Like a, you can get a Rhyme City police badge. I want it. I need it. And then we have Team Rocket collection that's come through, and this is just your straight-up classic Team Rocket style, black shirt, big red R. You can't go wrong. I absolutely love it. Now, we talked about the, was it like $130 Ditto Squishy Plush last week, which was, you know, so incredibly yes. overpriced. Yes, we did. So they've in, they've expanded on the Squishy Plush line with a 17-inch Snorlax, heck yes, for 43 bucks, a Gengar, a Psyduck who's like laying down flat, which is absolutely hilarious, and a Jigglypuff. So, again, it, these aren't Detective Pikachu branded stuff, but they're clearly playing into that because all these Pokemon have been featured in the Detective Pikachu trailers. So, that's really and cool. And there's a Naganado. Yeah, that's one. That thing just looks ultra beastly. Yeah, well, that's like one of these these really weird. We've, we haven't talked about these in a while. These plushes that almost look like figures, they, you know, because they're super detailed. Some of the plushes are even articulated. It's really weird. Not necessarily a, a plush you would want to snuggle with, but one that you would want to kind of play with like a toy. It's really cool. But check out PokemonCenter.com. Spend your money. They deserve it. All right, Adam, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to watch anime episode number 62, Snow Way Out. We'll be back Let's right after this. And we are back from our second break of the episode. Thank you so much for that. Man, we, that's a lot of breaks, man. Dude, that is a lot of breaks. Good it's, thing we clocked out for those breaks. Did we? And we got more coffee, right? No, dude. It's, it's officially uh, the next day. It's 12.02, so no more oh, coffee for me. It's, it's 12.02 a.m. I can't be <laughs> drinking coffee past midnight. It'll be like a gremlin. I'll turn into a... Yeah, I'll turn into a gremlin. <laughs> something or other. I mentioned at the top of the episode that this kind of is a really funky episode in terms of timeline. So episode that this was originally going to air after was the Porygon episode, the banned episode because of the seizures, that crazy episode. So oh yeah, yeah. So this this episode was kind of displaced because there was a break in the formatting. Pokemon at large took a break of releasing the episodes of of, of the anime because of everything that happened with that episode. So in the U.S., this episode was completely out of place. Now, you know, not to be spoilers, but I'm going to read a little bit, a little excerpt here from Bulbapedia because it kind of gives you a little bit of insight and explains here. It says, this episode was planned to be followed by a clip show summing up the events from episode 28, 
holiday hijinks. Again, so winter, you know, that's where Snow Way Out comes into play. It says, when episodes of the dub are aired in order, this episode and holiday hijinks were placed between It's Mr. Mime Time and Showdown for the Poke Corral. Now, Mr. Mime Time was two episodes ago as far as the U.S. release. So again, starting to already bend where this thing actually lives in the canon of Pokemon the series. It says, uh, at this point is which the episodes first aired in Japan. This causes confusion. And again, a little bit of a spoiler here, but we'll get there. In this episode, because the timeline is so broken, like we were just talking about Charizard two episodes ago when he had that amazing battle with Magmar and all that. This episode kind of goes back in time to Charmander. So we are 20 episodes ahead of where this should be. But back in time, it just it makes absolutely no sense. So going into this back episode, to the future. that's where we're going. Yeah, we just got to go with it. We got to run with it. Obviously, <laughs> there was a good reason why this kind of all got broken apart and kind of messed up the timeline. But let's enjoy it. Let's get into it. Adam, you ready to watch this thing? Listen, I was born ready. All right, let's fire this thing up in three, two, one. Yeah, so it was, uh, there was, I remember when we first started this podcast and we were going through some of the episodes, I think in like the first three or four, there was, um, three or, no, the first like three or four weeks worth of episodes, there was a lot of kind of weird displacement where things were kind of breaking, uh, the timeline between the Japanese lineup and the American lineup, so... It's just funky that this stuff kind of happened, and you kind of have to just look past it. You know, so every time I hear this, and I, I hear the... I forget the um, the artist's name, the, the singer that, that recorded the, the, the theme song, but he went on tour with uh, Video Games Live, which is an orchestral, you know, traveling tour of Pokemon music, or of video game music, and he, he went he actually performed this song live, uh, last year on stage, like in oh, this man. tour, so amazing. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. As catch and his friends people. continue on their journey, they figure their future oh, is the favorable. opening is a Foursome beautiful is snowy mountain, <laughs> and then fork. it shows a fork in the road. I have Look how happy Pikachu is! That, I know, right? Why isn't that a meme? Hmm. Let's see. So the first thing that you'll notice here that's going to be kind of awkward is where's Togepi? Brock looking at a map? No, where's Togepi? Oh yeah, Misty hasn't found Togepi yet. <laughs> but again, you have to you, ha you kind of have to forget that. I like that he calls him Peak. Snow way out. Sounds chilly. I think we better just So this this part kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like what? <laughs> How did you make it that far where the trees are literally covered in snow? Shh, don't break was... the magic. I, I'm always about Oh, Pikachu's he's pumped. He wants <laughs> he wants to climb this mountain. So this is why it reminds me of of Lord of the Rings cuz they're showing like these you know, completely snow-covered mountains, like just vast Whoa, mountains everywhere. Like no way, yeah. no real like blankets. <laughs> I love how the compass makes a noise. It's like we're 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 gonna find our way. Uh, now don't panic. If the sun's up there about three o'clock, according to my calculations, this is pretty funny. Plus, what does it mean? We're lost. <laughs> We lost that. <laughs> oh god, the animation. <laughs> oh, old faithful. So this is actually, you know, something that's worth talking about here. So, you know, using Pokemon for utility like this isn't something we see too often because, for whatever reason, they, they he'll pull the Pokemon out for battling and stuff like that, but. The fact that he's using Pidgeotto to kind of scout the way, I love that because this kind of it, it, it highlights the kind of you know symbiotic relationship between the Pokemon and its trainer. 
uh, where it's not just about battles. You know, they're actually helpful. They're actually part of the crew. So I, I really like that. Yeah, and I feel like it's always Pidgeotto, though. Well, because Pidgeotto is the man. Is it, a, is it a male? I don't even know. He's, he's the Pidgey. Odo. Why they come to Coldway? I feel like a catsicle. Oh, I hate snow as much as you James do. And but she loves holding it. each other. There's actually um a lot of really cool Jessie, Team Rocket stuff in this episode. Like this frozen fluff. I love snow. It brings back delicious. You know, they're freezing. Jessie's wearing her, you know, her usual clothes with all her exposed skin, but doesn't matter. She absolutely loves the snow. What is a did you get that pun? That Meowth pun? One of the few cherished memories of my otherwise wretched a child. <laughs> She's so kawaii right there. <laughs> oh my god, she's so cute! The <laughs> back, back to her being little. And innocent. Here's a snow loaf with snow sauce. A sampler of sushi All snow of her rolls. favorite dishes. It's a, it's a snow <laughs> And for dessert, a snow, snow in sushi. Pudding. Snow she rolls. Did they, did they say snido, snow to hoe potatoes instead of Idaho potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like snow cooking. I can't the question is, you must be did she joking. eat it all? You mean your mother actually made meals out of snow? <laughs> we had to make two. You gotta remember that that James grew up very affluent, so hearing that someone had to eat snow because they were poor. <laughs> There's nothing like it. Of course, only three people do. Ugh, sounds awful. Yeah, but at least it's all natural. This is actually, um, there's a really cool animation here that uh, is worth mentioning when, when, when Jesse gets really upset here. It's pretty cool. Let's make like the snow and drift. Where do, where do they store this balloon? It's just always there. To unite all peoples within our nation. It's just out of the, the scene that you're looking at every time. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse. Jay. I love how they, they did this intro. Surrender. Yeah, that shading at the beginning. Yeah, it was like a silhouette. We're Came in as all black, but they had like the white outlines. Huh? And there goes the balloon. I like how the fire is actually blowing as if someone was giving it input, like someone's actually doing it. It's just flying away on its own. We're not even at the top. Hey, it's snowing. Oh no, it was clear just a second ago. Oh my gosh. The weather in these mountains is totally unpredictable. Look at Pikachu's better, face. <laughs> before the sun goes down. Come on. <laughs> Yo, that animation is sick. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some sweet snowflakes. We're sunk. All of our food and supplies so, are on that balloon. So, this is an interesting part. Yeah, and it's starting to snow. You know, they're, Team Rocket's home. watching their, their hopes and dreams of escaping the cold kind of literally drift away in the balloon. And, like, you have this introspective moment here from, from Jessie huh? that she's what like, it, it's just a little bit out of character. I can make snow rolls. Do you have a plan? I think I need something a little bit more substantial. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, though? But, like, she's actually offering to help. I can't make snow rolls mama's way without so There it is. That's the animation I was talking about. How awesome is that? <laughs> she's focused. She needs her soy sauce. Ew. Hey, man, at least she had... At least Jesse's mom had, uh... Had, like, seaweed wraps to actually wrap the snow in. <laughs> right? Here we go, Lord of the Rings. Come on, Ash. There's no way we'll find anything. Should have took. They should have taken the mines of Mordor. No way, Ash. I mean Moria. <laughs> they are literally like ankle deep in snow. And Ash has no blanket, no covering. I guess you're right. Good. Let's start digging a cave in the snow. Not with that attitude, Brock. Not even the best Pokemon breeder. And Pikachu just blows away? Dude, I know. What? <laughs> Stay here. When I first saw this, I was like, really? Is he that light? <laughs> I mean, he is a mouse-type Pokemon. Right? Oh, yeah. And in 
Ash runs away to cat, you know, to go save Pikachu, and Brock's like, "Don't go, you'll get lost." It's like, bro, your your friend just ran out there. <laughs> so now he's officially knee deep in snow. Oh. Now he's face first in snow. I thought this was it for Ash when I first saw it. Pikachu. The feels, bro. The feels. Oh my god, Pikachu my poor feels. So far away. Pikachu. He is just tragic. Like his his socks are gonna be so wet. <laughs> uh, I like oh. the scoring behind this too. Like he it's so intense. Bro, he's determined. Pikachu, here, grab a hold of my hand. Pikachu just hanging on the edge of the mountain. Poor Pika, use quick attack. <laughs> oh, so close. You're so close. <laughs> grab my strong oh, hand. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> Pikachu. Is it bad that on, we're laughing at this? <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I mean... So, here we come, we come back to the concept of Pokemon as utility. And I think that this is cool that this gets revisited again, because... You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta use your Pokemon for, for, for all the different ways you can. And I mean, obviously this is the best way to save Pikachu, is just letting down a vine. Ah! Who's that it's like the never-ending drop. It's a unicorn. It's Pikachu. Oh, it's oh, it's mom. Oh, yeah, it's mom. Yeah. <laughs> you smell. <laughs> quick, Bulba! Quick, lights? quick, Bulba! Dork, save him! Uh, uh, yeah, where'd she go? <laughs> I like how Bulbasaur doesn't have the strength. I know, like I always thought that. I was like, why is why doesn't he just pull him in himself? Oh, and yeah, the, go happy Pikachu, so happy. Oh, there you go, Bulbasaur. Just yep. <laughs> oh, you're so sad, dude. The feels in this episode are all look look at look how proud. Look at the the feels, bro. What? <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, I was with other people. <laughs> it's no use. We can't get back up. Hey, Rob! And Pikachu's now like tucked into Ash Ash's shirt. I, it's a cute overload. Pikachu, we can't stay out here all night. Oh hey, my God, we the need wind. to get a snow cave like Brock said. Well yeah, dude, you're in short sleeves, Mang. <laughs> He just starts digging with his bear. Like, uh, yeah, he's got gloves on, but they're like not meant for the snow. <laughs> he's just digging through the snow. I bet you wish you had like a diglet. Yeah. Okay. Here we go again. Pokemon is utility. Go Charmander, and again, breaking the timeline, Charmander has already evolved up to Charizard, but because this is, you know, almost 20 episodes where you know ahead of where it should be, it's still Charmander. And each of them has snowballs, and they're just sealing up the cave. Like what? Well, they use it like mortar to fill it in. Yeah. <laughs> They're good. Yay. Charmander and Char Charmander was shaking too. Like, bro, fire Pokemon could be cold. Yeah, just make sure it doesn't melt on you. So Charmander actually really enhances the flame on its tail so it's not just the normal little you know matchstick style flame he like blows it up real big dinner time mom's secret recipe snow roll it cut just a team rocket in an igloo 
now all we got left to point out Yo, matches. It's Jesse. This is this has if to be the handiwork of Jesse. She's the expert here. Maybe that will be enough to keep us warm. Give me that. <laughs> we just have to use our imagination. We've I'll got try three matches left. Warm up. Ah, this hot spring is delightfully warm. This is a pretty funny little uh, little dream like sequence here too. This is the perfect place to soak up the sun. It must be over a hundred. I don't understand that reference. It's just like clam chowder. What? I guess he's a cat. Wants just like some food. This desert is scorching. Yo, check out Studley James. In the desert with heaters, <laughs> with teapots. Aww. <laughs> she couldn't. She couldn't handle herself. They were sleeping. That's great. I love that. <laughs> well, at least she's, she's got the right idea. She <laughs> fell asleep and it's cold and I hope just Mr. died. Brock are all right. Charmander, are you okay? So this is, you know, one of those things where it's like, yeah, I hope Misty and Brock are all right, but dude, you, you bailed on them. Die. Look at him, he's sweating. The Pokeballs ought to be pretty warm. Okay, you're going into your Pokeballs. You have to. Yeah, they will be. So, you see how he recalled Charmander and just pulled him right back into the ball? I, I'd imagine that he could just do that to Pikachu. Well, he probably got rid of the Pokeball. You want to stay out to help keep me warm? Oh, Pikachu. Again, they they remind you of your feelings. <laughs> it's you know the 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 bond, the connection. You know, it's really what the co you know one of the core pillars here of of Pokemon. Look at, look at that. Look at, look how he, he actually, like... Come here, Pikachu. <laughs> this is so fun. He takes off his vest and tucks all the Pokeballs into it. But, like, will it really help? I don't know if it'll really help. It's so cold. Ah! Listen to me. You've got to get in your Pokeball now, Pikachu. Ash looks weird without his, like, button up. Yeah. I'm serious. Get in your Pokeball now. No, Ash is going to legit die. I love this. I love this so much. I'm gonna be okay. As long as I know you're the feels. Pikachu, it's an order. You can't you, you can't knock the hustle, man. You can't knock the determination of Ash. Like no matter what, he's he'll always find a little bit of silver lining. Because he's got he's got a crew. Aww. Remember, the Aww. cold of outside is My eating away at his back. Right exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's got he's got a circular patch of frostbite on his back. <laughs> Look at Pidgeotto actually wrapping his wings around Ash. It's so awesome. As he tears up and it freezes to him. Ultra dramatic music. Super kawaii, sad Pokemon. The feels. <laughs> and then derpy Pidgeotto, <laughs> whose beak it's can't like really Pidgeotto. convey emotion. <laughs> we'll be cold all together. That's right. They uh, need to develop a human Pokemon. Up behind you? Like, that's literally where my head's at. <laughs> oh, the blizzard's over. Oh, sure Ash has got his shirt on again. I love how, like, the second that they come out, hey, it's Brock! <laughs> it's great Brock and Misty are like, hey. Ooh. Ash, how'd you get through that storm? We made a cave, just like Brock said. Yeah, you're not dead. <laughs> For us, we didn't have to freeze all night in the one I dug. Onyx dug into an underground hot spring. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how cut it's so funny. <laughs> 
isn't comfy, that's for sure. Like, what? And take a look at what the blizzard blew in. Rub it in, that's Misty. Rub it in. Balloon. Wonder how they lost it. Right? Find like, uh... It's out of fuel, <laughs> but I know how we can fix that. Go, Vulpix! Wonder if the soy sauce is still in there. Vulpix, flamethrower, now! Vulpix powered balloon. How long could it hold that flamethrower going? Uh, well, it stopped it. So all of a sudden, they're they're hot air balloon experts. If we survive this, I'm gonna need a facelift. Look up there! That's our balloon. I love how the dy the Team Rocket dynamic. It's the greatest. Yeah, and what happened to their igloo? Like the Did they just... I guess my they woke up! That, that was, that was so yesterday. It feels lovely. Team Rocket is warming up again! Hey, did you guys hear what I just heard? This episode has awesome music. Hey, look. What'd you hear, Ash? Yeah. It's a towel! What? We made I didn't hear anything. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, but again, it goes from pure, like it's like a straight so line from winter to like springtime. But I wonder, back in the timeline that this actually was supposed to take place, like what town is that? Like where are they in the story? I don't even know. So narrator comes on. We're at the end of the episode already. What actually happened in this episode? That's gonna be such a like a weird situation. Don't it's worry. freezing out, we but they're in a hot spring. To be continued to Pokemon Jukebox. Pikachu's Jukebox. So, <sighs> dude, this episode, I think they probably would have been better off just not airing it <laughs> at this point. Like, I wonder if yeah. kids were actually com confused during the initial run of this. Like, where is Togepi? Where is Charizard? Like, so weird that they decided to finally air this, you know, well, well after when it was supposed to come out in the timeline. But, you know, yeah. either way, even if it was in timeline, one of those episodes that you could just lift and drop anywhere along the line and it wouldn't make a difference because there's really not anything that's pertinent to the storyline at all happening. So... I don't know, man. How do you feel about this one? It was nice to see Charmander again, but it's it was confusing. Yeah, there's no Togepi. It's like just weird. It's just weird. I, I... Togepi would have tumbled down the mountain. We know that. So I'm glad there wasn't a Togepi. You know, Togepi's never been in the Pokeball, right? I don't think so. I don't so. think no, so either. No, it hatched from an egg. I, yeah, but it's never gone in. That's interesting. But, I don't know, definitely a funky episode, definitely breaks the time-space continuum, but I think we'll have to have better luck next time, because I just was not feeling this episode at all. Yeah, it was, it's definitely different. Alright, well, there is there is one thing that's going to make me feel better, and that would be a booster. Now, if you've been listening to the episodes, our rec recent episodes, both Adam and I have had the worst luck with our pulls. The worst. Adam, our luck is about to change. <laughs> you don't sound too confident about that? Well, because I don't know what's in Detective Pikachu packs. I have two of them. All right. Because I, there's only four in there. I have a team up. I have a team up. I'm, I'm ready to go here because I know that something good is about to happen. Even if it's a hollow Zapdos or a hollow Jirachi or a hollow Charizard, boom. Like... Even a hollow of those three would be fine. Well, let's see what I got here. Pokemon Communication Trainer, Hitmonlee, Metal Goggles, Larvitar. I love this art for Larvitar. Execute, Grimer, Litten with fantastic art, Cosmog. My reverse is a reverse Hitmonlee. And look at that, a Jirachi with Stellar Wish. 
The very practical. Seriously, you go to Jirachi? Start. I'll take the Jirachi. Jirachi Hollow, man. That is it's fantastic. All right, so not a GX, not a tag team. That's still on the horizon for me, but I will absolutely yeah, that, take this. Jirachi is in every single deck. That's like the most expensive card in the entire set. Is it really? Yeah. Well, that means the most expensive hollow. Wow. All right, yeah, so yes. Like okay, I'm happy. All right, let's see what you top it. Let's see what you got. All right, all right, all right. All right. This is my first pack of Detective Pikachu. And now these aren't ten card decks, right? I mean, ten card boosters. No, they're only they're only four, but they're all hollow. So my first hollow. No, okay. So it's I got a Snubble, I get a Jigglypuff, a Psyduck, and a Greninja. I love that they're all Pokemon that have been featured in in the trailers. Yeah, no, that's sweet. I my goal is to get Ditto. That's what I want. Okay, pack number two. Well, the, the Ditto is has a place in the meta, right? Yes. Okay, so I've got a Lickitung, another Jigglypuff, a Magikarp, and a Slacking. Uh. <laughs> so no Ditto, but still, all these cards are hollow, so that's so cool. All right, well... I can't be disappointed because they're it. all hollow. Yeah, yeah. Adam, that's an episode. That is, in fact, an episode. We had an interview. We did. We had some fun. <laughs> and we opened some cards. All right, guys. Thank you so much for checking us out. Please check out gottawatchemall.com for everything that we're doing. We would really appreciate it if you would leave us a review in iTunes. That would help us significantly. Pretty much anywhere where you can leave a review on the podcast, we would deeply appreciate it if you would go ahead and do that. Email us, info at gotta watch them all.com. Thanks again for listening, and make sure you check out Bulbador. Bye, everybody.